Hello, everybody. <clears throat> uh, my name is Masoud Olia, and I'm a professor in the School of Engineering at Brentwood University. And I'm back with another example, another problem related to um, systems that are excited harmonically by a harmonic force. Uh, in this case, we have this rotating uh, system as you could see with a mass of 24 kilograms. So this is a slender rod uh, with, with the spring force um, uh, due to the spring of 2000 Newton per meter stiffness. And then a damper here at point C, uh, as you could see the, uh, the length of the bar is uh, 0.6 meters and it's rotating about B. Uh, as you could see the, uh, objective of this problem is to find the steady state amplitude of the system. Remember, steady state amplitude is just the amplitude of the, um, the in this case, the uh, rotating uh, bar as t approaches infinite, infinite. And it's basically the, um, the amplitude of the, uh, the harmonic uh, due to harmonic force. Uh, and it's just a particular solution of the system, so it's not the uh, the amplitude of the total solution. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, try to find the um, differential equation of this system, and then try to compare it with a template that you probably have seen this concept in another video that I have posted on YouTube. Um, so, based on that template, then you can make a comparison and find the steady state amplitude. So the first thing we need to do is to uh, find the differential equation. So I just want to show you that due to this force, uh, the pivot is about point B. So I just want to uh, see that if we call this angle here, theta, this angle, the same angle, uh, what would be the deformation of the spring here at point A? And what would be the deformation of uh, the damper? So based on a small angle and all this, as you clearly could see that this guy is going to be 0.2 times theta, right? Tangent of the small angle and the angle in radians are the same. And since point C is on the same uh, distance from the pivot point, that should be also 0.2 theta. So just drawing the free body diagram here for you, you'll see that there is a force uh, since the spring moves up, it's going to push back down. What would be the force of this would be the, the stiffness 2000 times the displacement 0.2 theta. Similarly, the damper is pushed down due to this applied force. So the damper is going to push up. The force of damper, as you know, is equivalent to the damping constant, which is 200 times the velocity of this point, which would be 0.2 times theta dot. Now, of course, we're gonna take moment about B uh, and this moment, taking moment about B is equal to J sub B or I sub B. I should switch this to I. I sub B times alpha. And clearly the system is going to be disturbed due to this force in the clockwise direction. So notice that uh, the moment of this force uh, coming from the spring is going to be counterclockwise. The force itself is 2,000 times 0.2 theta, but you have to multiply it by another 0.2, which is the moment arm here, and that's negative. Similarly, the force of the damper is going to be negative, right? So this is the force and then times another 0.2 times this distance, right? And don't forget the force of that causing this disturbance to harmonic force, which is 25 cosine AT times 0.4. And this is equal to I sub B times alpha. Alpha, of course, is theta double dot. Now, what I wanna do here for you is to show you that how you can find I sub B probably have seen this in another video. You have to use parallaxis equation. So that's I bar. For a slender rod, I bar is 112 ml squared. And D is the distance between 
the center of gravity, which would be point G here and the pivot point. As you could see clearly that D is equal to point one. So if you do the calculation here, remember the mass is 24, the length of the bar is 0. 0.6, again 24, and then that D is 0. 0.1. This happens to be 0. 0.96 with the unit of kilogram meter squared. All right, if you go ahead and do a cleanup of this equation, this should become AD theta, and this becomes eight uh, theta dot, and then we have a 10 cosine eight T, and then of course we have a 0.96 theta double dot. Now we'll clean this up one more time by bringing all the terms with theta double dot, theta dot, and theta in one side of the equation. So in this case, we'll have a positive eight theta dot and an 80 theta, and then the force remains on the other side. All right, now, next thing I wanna do is to normalize this, meaning that let's divide by 0.96, so the coefficient of theta double dot becomes uh, one. So if we do that, then we'll be able to compare with our, uh, basically our uh, template. And um, so we end up getting uh, 8.33 theta dot here when you divide. Uh, 83.33 theta. And then finally, the 10 over 0.96 becomes 10.4167 cosine 80. So just uh, let's talk about the template now. By template, I mean that if you have a system, a general system, be it translation or rotation, so this x double dot could be theta double dot. If we have a damped system, which could be represented like this, uh, equal to some normalized amplitude times cosine omega drt, the driving frequency. And now let's let's make our comparison. You see this? This is two zeta omega n. This is your natural frequency, and this is the normalized amplitude, and your omega dr is eight. If that's the case, and you could put your equation in this form, then the steady state amplitude, you can call it X or some constant A0, this is the steady state amplitude, meaning the amplitude over a long period of time. And remember, this is just the amplitude of the particular solution, the steady state solution. Then it's equal to, and this is the template that I was talking about, it's F0, over the square root of omega n squared minus omega dr driving frequency squared squared plus two zeta omega n uh, omega dr sorry and this whole thing is a squared and is under the square root well actually we don't even have to find the damping ratio zeta look two zeta omega n is 8.33. Your omega dr is eight, right? That's the driving frequency. Your omega n squared is 83.3, which actually, if you take the square root of that, that's about 9.13 radians per second. So if you put the 9.13, square it, then minus eight squared, then the whole thing is squared, and then go through this process of squaring this. And what is your F0? Your F0 is this guy, 10.4167. So just a quick calculation, and look, your steady state amplitude should come out to be about 0.15. Now, in terms of the unit of this amplitude, this 0.15, since this represents the rotation of the system, right, is in radians. And I was the steady state solution of this, theta as a function of time, is this constant A0, since we have a cosine 
as a force, as an input, would be cosine omega drt minus some phase angle. And the phase angle can be determined, but what's really important in design is this steady state amplitude that you need to calculate. So that came out to be a 0.15 radians uh, over a long period of time. Again, thank you for watching. And as usual, uh, if you're, you like this video, please uh, subscribe and we'll always have new videos for you. Thank you and see you soon.